What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another Detroit Lions video, of course, and today we are here to dive into another potential free agent target for the Detroit Lions, man. Free agency is right around the corner, and we started our draft talk today, not on this channel specifically, but over on Bleacher Report, and I put that link up in the community, so feel free to go check that out. We kind of talked about different options at pick number 29 for the Lions. Really, my first time discussing different options at pick 29 that I've just done on my own. So if you guys want to check that out, definitely feel free to do so. A lot of draft stuff is coming very soon. I'm starting to kind of lay that foundation I feel good about, and we'll start to dive into some content here. But today, we got some news that a big name pass rusher in the NFL was going to be released based on his contract situation and for me immediately I was like intrigued I was like hold up I kind of want to look into this a little bit so I looked into the background of why he is being released and I was like this could be a guy that's worth making a video on in terms of should the Lions be interested in signing this player as a free agent this offseason he kind of checks a lot of the boxes that I think as fans a lot of people are looking for the Lions to add this offseason so today we're going to talk about this potential free agent target for the Detroit Lions, and I'm going to say whether or not I think the Lions should go after him in free agency. Let's get it started. Welcome, everybody, to my video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, man, we are back with another free agency video. And today, we are here to talk about an absolute animal in the NFL. That is Shaq Barrett, who statistically, his production speaks for itself. Okay, I don't need to sit here and just dive through stats. I can throw some numbers on the screen right now, but his production speaks for itself in the NFL. NFL, he has been incredible. But today, it was announced that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were releasing Shaq Barrett before he was owed 15.04 million option bonus next month. And it sounds like they're going to designate him on a post-June 1st cut to kind of spread out some of that dead cap, but he is going to be released. And they didn't necessarily close the door on him potentially returning to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if that's a possibility. But we also know that Tampa Bay has some young players that play that outside linebacker role defensively. He was already rotational this past season. He was the starter, but he was rotational, and in 2022, missed a lot of time with an Achilles injury. So, with Yaya Diaby, Joe Shion Trainka, with the kind of youth that they have there, moving off of him to open up some cap space. Okay, so, today we're talking about a potential free agent target, and I'm sure by the time that you've seen this, the odds have tweaked. They've probably changed a little bit from what I'm seeing them at. However, because it's where it is right now, I want to get this out to you because, again, I think this is a really nice opportunity that I'm really looking at right now so make sure you click that top link in the description because bet us has an awesome promotion where on your first three deposits you can get a 125 percent match up to 2500 dollars if you use code join 125 the numbers join 125 and you also get a 10 percent gambler's insurance if you're active every six months on your net losses now with that here's what i want to showcase so of course we're over here on the bet us website on the left side you can see all the sports that they offer on the top you can see some of the different options race book casino games live betting but if you go to NFL, if you go to football and then you go to NFL specials, you can start to look at some of these names. So we're talking free agency, Alvin Kamara, next team, if not the Saints. But the one that stands out to me and I was looking for is this one, Justin Fields, next team if not the Bears. Right now, Pittsburgh is at plus 325. And I don't know how true this stuff is. We know the NFL Combine is this week, so some things could be true. Some things maybe just are simply not true. But I've seen some rumors. I've seen rumors that the Steelers legitimately have interest in Justin Fields to the point where I saw a darn rumor that said that the Steelers were willing to offer their second-round pick to go get Justin Fields. And there's potential names thrown in there. And the fact that they're at plus 325 makes this seem like an excellent opportunity to potentially make some money here looking in, to get into the football betting side of things say for example you just wanted to bet ten dollars on this let me put just let me put a 10 piece nugget on this ten dollars you could win 30 to 50 on this so i feel like this is a nice little way to mason make a nice little trick i mean look now you go to mcdonald's like four times at first you only go once and go four times get yourself a smoothie too with this so i just want to make sure y'all didn't miss out on this opportunity that bet us have but that's also on their website right now all right Let's get back to the video. I'll put some on the market. And as a Lions fan, I'm like, does this guy make a ton of sense? And the reason I'll start here is this. I couldn't remember discussing free agency early in the process, and it was Jadavian Clowney that like hit my mind immediately. And it was like, that could make sense, right? This seems like the offseason where the Lions could be looking at some of those short-term deals, as they usually do. But this would not shock me if there was a 
kind of a splashy free agent signing that took place in a short-term form, a short-term type of deal. But he was a guy that was kind of in sort of that like ring-chasing type of mode, right? You're not looking for a 26, 27-year-old player that's like, well, if he proves himself, he'll get an extension. Maybe the guy doesn't get extension. Maybe he does, but maybe he doesn't. Maybe it's not even about that. It's not like, hey, if he has a great season, season he has to be extended. But instead, it was like, hopefully we get a great season. Maybe it's one of, you know, kind of the final seasons that you give at a peak type of level. But if you can bring that to us, man, you could give us a huge boost this next season. And that's why Jadavion Clowney seemed to make a ton of sense for me. He's bounced around. He's a pass rusher coming off a career season. And then I watched him and I was like, okay, I like it. Don't love it necessarily on a one-year deal potentially. PFF projected a one-year $9 million deal. So when I saw Shaq Barrett, and I know the kind of production that this guy has at over 600 snaps this past season, 49 pressures, 37 of which being hurries, I was like, okay, this is someone that I have to dive into a little bit here. Now, as I said, unfortunately, he missed a lot of time in 2022 due to an Achilles injury. But as I also stated, as a 31-year-old outside linebacker in this defense, this is not the type of guy I'd be looking to the Lions to sign and say, hey, man, this could be a long-term option. This could be one of those Fletcher Cox type of deals potentially, somewhere in that range. Maybe there's a little bit more meat on the bone than that. There absolutely could be because he's been really good when he's been on the field. So there might be more there than what I'm saying, but it just feels like he could fall into a similar category as a Jadavian Clowney, but at the same time, could add more value. So that's what I dove into today, watched some games this past year, and I'll kind of give you my early takes on Shaq Barrett and how interested I am or what I think he still has to offer. And this is based on the last season specifically. First step off the line of scrimmage. To me, it's not a huge standout aspect or trait within his game. And you got to keep in mind that some of these traits that I talk about today, it's very possible that years past, like he may have stood out more so in these categories and I may have been more blown away. Like, man, do you remember him in 2019? Like, that could be true, but I didn't go back and watch any of those games. So I knew of Shaq Barrett. He's production-wise insane. It's why after signing the one-year deal from the Denver Broncos, he ended up getting the four-year $72 million extension, which he's now being released on because of the cap situation. They had to restructure him this past season. I knew that he was productively incredible, but just watching the player, I didn't really watch the player like that. So this is, again, just based on what I saw last season. But I do think the, the first step is adequate. I think it's sufficient. I think it could be effective off the line of scrimmage. But to me, where he where he wins is a pass rusher. And this is kind of the overarching theme for me, but I'll talk about a lot of different aspects. But it's really that he plays at his own pace. You get that veteran feel when you watch him rushing off the edge. Is that This is the kind of guy that plays at his own pace. I think the best way I describe that, I always think of like Luka in the NBA. I'm like, that guy, he plays really slow but he plays at his own pace, very under control. He feels like that as a pass rusher, pacing in terms of the strides, the setups, reading the offensive tackle, having multiple moves to get to, right? Not really seemingly ever playing out of control, playing within himself, but understanding what he's capable of. That's the vibe that I get when I watch Sherrick Barrett rushing off the edge specifically. Now, where I think he lacks a little bit here when you talk about kind of the step or the distance covered, I think he does lack a little bit in some of the depth that he can actually cover, specifically when working kind of the high side, trying to get the edge, right? Some of those kind of skip through skips through edge rush where he's trying to get the edge but kind of slide by an offensive tackle where he doesn't create a ton of depth and a really agile offensive tackles can kind of reset themselves and position themselves and not really let him get that edge cleanly then on top of that I don't think he has elite bend specifically at the top of a rush where he can really sink down kind of like we saw at times James Houston do and just slide through the edge and kind of drift through and still get to the quarterback doesn't really bring that necessarily either so for him I think there's some there's some knocks there but I think it's I think it's adequate with that being said though as a pass rusher definitely Definitely still has a lot of ways to win. And you see it, you see it in production. One of the way, things that I love best, and this shows up as a run defender too, he has a nose for the football. And you probably hear that a ton, but it really is the vision. It's the path of a pass rusher. It's the feel. It's knowing how to set up an offensive tackle because of where the quarterback's going on the play. It's the sense to redirect, right? Plant, stop. Let's get back at the play. He's starting to step up in the pocket. That sense shows up over and over and over. It shows up as a run defender where he's constantly getting in plays, the forward thinking angles that he's taking in pursuit. But then as a pass rusher, the constant redirects, play it, stop, let's get back into the play. Oh, he's stepping out of the pocket, I feel that. That feel that he has for where the quarterback is within the pocket, to me, leads to so many hits on the quarterback, so much success of getting his hands in the backfield. It's because of that feel for what's going on from the quarterback that he brings as a pass rusher. Other aspects that I love from him as a pass rusher, and again, probably being a veteran adds to this a ton, is hand usage. I think he thrives in terms of hand usage, somewhat as a run defender as well, but especially as a pass rusher. Second effort pass rush wins. You constantly find ways that he's able to reset his hands, get himself back into the play. He also plays with really nice contact balance as a pass rusher as well. You don't see him on the ground very often. I think some of the nimbleness in his footwork is, is kind of impressive. You don't really expect it when you watch him drop into coverage. You don't expect this aspect, but he's very nimble at staying 
staying on his feet, staying on his toes, being able to avoid, show some agility, stay on his feet when blocks are coming flying at him. But to me, the hand use is what stands out. Very accurate with his hands, very consistent with his hands, has tons of different hand usage moves that he can get to within his pass rush as well. Love about that is his ability to set up offensive tackles through his in and out sidestep setups. And then you also get kind of that skip pass rush as well, where we kind of skip through, skip delay as a pass rusher, kind of pause an offensive tackle to play before going again. You saw it on kind of the Green Bay spin that he actually was successful on because his spin move to me a lot of times just looks like he's doing it in place. There's not a ton of success that comes along with it. But the setup here against Green Bay, one of his pass rush wins in this game, was set up by the whole setup to allow the spin move to be effective. You see kind of the skip, the delay, and then he works right into the spin move immediately. But he's very consistently accurate with his hand placement, getting getting himself clean as a pass rusher, resetting for the second for the second look. You also see, again, some of the balance to his game and the pacing where you can see him completely shift the hip flexion to settle himself down and then plant, drive, convert speed to power on the edge. You saw that against the Lions a little bit as well. Really nice ability to open up the chest of an offensive tackle, again, kind of with the setup into the initial pass rush. And then I think he brings enough flexion to set up some of kind of that long arm move and kind of some of that walk back potential. Now, I do think as a pass rusher as a whole, he's not like a pure bowl rusher. He does have some nice, I think, heavy hands, some pop on contact. You'll see it especially as a run defender. But I do think as a pass rusher, you don't get a ton of consistent like walk back or you know bull rush consistency I think a couple things first off again knee bend to me doesn't stand out a ton here outside of when he kind of gets his hips into it dials himself down and then drives forward he can open up a tackle when it's set up well it's beautiful but I don't think it's like incredible in terms of just knee bend to purely be working the edge sink himself and then drive through with power he doesn't really bring some of that kind of walk back strength to the table and then the same thing kind of shows up with the arc also you don't get a ton of consistent inside pass rush moves some of that could probably pop back to agility as well well I like the balance the pacing you don't get a ton of twitch or shiftiness so you don't get a ton of like inside pass rush wins all right there's just there's just very minimal this is really grew on me obviously you see it in pursuit and the effort that he gives it's a never stopping motor that he brings and you'll see it like two three I mean he be, he can be way away for 20 yards away from the play and he's running it down he really popped against the line some of the football intelligence that I think that he brings so we'll talk about that here in a second but in terms of like strength at the point of attack and just run defense as a whole as I touched on vision to the ball carrier I love this off the backside the angles that he takes the way that he steps in front of run plays where you can kind of sense it and feel it but also on the front side as well all right he has some of that slipperiness to him for pulling offense vibrant or tight ends coming along where you see some of the agility to kind of sidestep but still stay balanced I love the hand usage into contact I think that's absolutely massive is his hand usage and then again still being able to reset constantly fighting to keep discipline stick on the outside force everything back inside and you'll see it on toss plays where he gets completely on top of it and then again on the backside while he doesn't have an elite first step to me it's sufficient so if, if it's a toss that takes a little bit or maybe the running back can't immediately hit the hole you can see him off the backside crash down make plays behind the line of scrimmage from time to time and stay inside though consistently at the point of attack at the point of attack. The biggest knock that I have there is that sometimes his hands get kind of trapped. You know, if he's working from one to two and he kind of has to deal with a tight end and slide off to a tackle and his hands kind of get trapped by his side, he can't really get him up. But again, I think the hand usage that he brings well is a discipline on the edge, front side and back side. You'll also see, if you're just talking about discipline in general, play actions, right? You don't see him dive down. I didn't really see any examples that where it's like, oh, he dove on the boot and now here goes the quarterback. He's wide open. You saw it against Lions, the sack that he had on Jared Goff, but you see this all the time where he's stepping in front. I mean, occasionally you can hit him with some screens. You also saw the Penny Sewell one against the Lions in the playoffs where it was a here comes Penny Sewell. He tries to kind of stand in, take on the lead block, but then it goes really wide on the play, and you're like, man, he, how is he supposed to deal with that? So he's been got before, but in general, right, the natural discipline, it's all there, and the football intelligence is also there, and we'll start to kind of talk about that a little bit here. Talk about coverage effectiveness. Now, this isn't an area that he necessarily lives. I would say you definitely see him a lot more as a, as a pass rusher than you do in coverage, and that makes sense. Past season, 11 receptions, a lot on 15 targets, 84.9 pass rating. I mean, statistically over his career, he's only allowed like an 89 pass rating, so statistically it actually is pretty good. But with that being said, from what I've seen, I didn't see him in man coverage much at all, but I would say that in terms of could he like mirror match the tight end down the field, I wouldn't advise it. I don't think that would be great. Uh, zone coverage as well, the longer the play goes, they kind of can slide away from him a little bit, but I would say his initial drops where he gets to, the depth that he creates, can be very effective 
aggressive, disrupting pass lanes, but he also does it with good awareness. Like, you'll see a lot of guys that play fast and they're running fast and, you know, they'll drop and get a ton of depth, but then it's like they don't really see anything that's taking place. You see that uh, I've been going through a lot of draft prospects, so you'll see things like that where it's like they're doing things fast, but they're just kind of running to spots. He doesn't feel like that. I mean, this little one against the Lions where Jameson's kind of breaking back inside and he kind of like halts himself and sees that first before getting out to the back. I was like, I love that. Like, you can see the awareness, right, in the feel in his game, and that's what he brings to the table. Running backs leaking out constantly, stepping in front of running backs, shut down a screen. The Lions couldn't even throw the screen because he took away the running back that was just leaking out of the backfield, right? He doesn't just let those things go, but I think it's zone coverage. He's shown real effect in this to get to a good landmark, get to good depth, read, you know, here comes the running back out of the backfield, but he's still capable of running with tight ends, things like that. You will see, like, he gets matched up on a tight end. He has to run with him on a dig route, and he plays with himself. Like, he's not crazy. He's not trying to jump things. He's not trying to be all twitchy, but he can run with guys, right? Maybe a little bit in trail, but he can run with them. So I wouldn't trust him in man over and over, but if you're talking about can you do like underneath zone drops, absolutely. I think he can bring some underneath zone drops. I don't think you want to ask a lot of his role in coverage, but there's capability there, right? He could be effective, and to me, it's more so just how smart he is, right? He sees seemingly everything. Oh, to the agility side of things, an area where I think he's lacking a little bit, he's a little bit heavy-footed when you watch him. You also see kind of the change of direction in space. It's why I wouldn't want to consistently ask him to live in coverage. Um, the lateral agility is also a little bit limited. I think that really pops up as a pass rusher. Some of the lack of some of the inside-outside wins that do show up a little bit, specifically some of the inside counter pass rush wins that don't really pop up as often as you would hope. See it on kind of stunt work as well. Like if he's looping inside, here comes a crash or or if it's the opposite way. Some just the, the agility doesn't really pop there and you don't see a ton of success. And then finally, you finish with the close aspect, his ability to close um, really as a pass rusher, but also as a run defender. And like I said, I think straight line speed, it's 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 solid. Like, it, it's good. It's, it's a little bit above average for me there. And I think on the backside, that shows up as well, too. Like I said, uh, some toss plays, you occasionally see him kind of run those things down. But you get a lot of late effort wins. I love the motor that he plays with when he is on the field specifically. I also love the smart angles that he takes, run defense in the box, also as a pass rusher as well. I just think he, he also does lack some of the burst and this is the big thing so a little bit limited uh, of some of the pure bend there as well some of the twitch and then also just some of the burst and you'll see a lot of kind of the high side rushes kind of fade out and they'll kind of get pushed out of the play and it's because he doesn't have some of that burst to kind of like okay I want to skip through here slide through here's my hands I'm going to slide around and he can't really get the edge and some of these athletic tackles can kind of just slide with him and as I always go back to what Aaron Glenn said about rushing upfield and just rushing past quarterbacks in today's NFL with all the mobility you have there I think these high FBI guys where they can play through half man and they understand not to run out of the pocket or they can plant redirect, these are the guys that can be so impactful where it's not just about what sacks they put up. It's like, hey, did you keep the guy in the pocket? Did you affect him late in the plays or a second effort win? And he checks all those boxes. He may not have the consistent bull rush dominance or half man, he's always going to drive him back. You may That may be more of a flash thing than anything, unfortunately. But he's a smart player in general, and I'm all about those guys. So really good offense tackles that move well, has much less success. And because he doesn't have a consistent bull rush, like, oh, I could just drive you back then if that's not there. To me, you get much more inconsistency in terms of like he's the initial winner. He's going to win on his initial move or his initial pass rush plan. And maybe that's just a little bit of the NFL level, or maybe that's a little bit where he's at right now as a pass rusher. But to me, it's, it's a lot more of the instincts, the feels a pass rusher. I don't think you get as many consistent first effort wins that you would love. I think he has a lot in his toolbox. I think he plays at a really good pace. But whether that was San Fran, Green Bay, us a couple of times, I never really in the, had a moment in those where I felt like, man, he's taking over. Especially against like Green Bay or San like I never felt like he was taking over against Trent Williams but I always thought like okay he can be impactful there, there's there's an impactful play here comes a splash win and then on top of that like he's usually in the right spot and he's such an effort player against a run that I just love it I love the FBI that he brings to the table so is this a guy that the Detroit Lions should target a free agency well obviously the price point price point would be the biggest factor of this I would say yes in the sense of and it depends on the price point if you're looking for that piece I think he makes a ton of sense to me of like okay if you're looking for a guy one year type of deal veteran presence looking to go win but still can give you impact like this is a player where he doesn't have to take every snap so if James came back Derek Barnes comes back you want a rotation you sign this guy he's gonna play because you signed him but at the same time he doesn't need to take every snap it's actually better for him to rotate in and out probably every other drive you know if you could do things like that it'd probably be most beneficial for him and then you have to gauge how much money you're gonna throw to something like that but rotation every drive is where he's going to be his best you'll get that with a lot of pass rushers he's not like a future piece from like he's gonna solve the issues or, or he's going to be the future for us here. But if you were saying, hey, we don't really want to invest a ton into kind of like that sandbacker role within our defense, right? And, and 
also, his impact, too, is that he could be out there on third downs. Some players were thinking, well, only on base downs when they have this many tight ends, you can put him as a Sam. Like, no, you can do that, but then you can also play him on third downs. Just put him out there as a general pass rusher because he will give you impact, right? Will he be our best pass rusher? No, but he'll give you impact as a pass rusher. He could be our third best pass rusher next season, and he'd be very helpful. He'd be an upgrade to kind of the rotation that we had going on last season. The guy can rush the passer, and he, he can feel the quarterback, so he gives you a lot of those late wins, good FBI. He's going to do a nice job of keeping the quarterback contained as well, if that's what you're asking of him. Um, I just don't think he has as consistent as the first effort wins that you would like to see. For me, I honestly like them more than Jadavian Clowney, you know, from what I remember from watching him. I liked him more than that, uh, but I don't think I would go, like, push – you know, a huge number here with Shaq Barrett. I would I would be hesitant to push over $10 million for a single season here. Obviously, there's so much that goes into it. Oh, here's a void here. You know, we saw that with DJ Chark, for example. I do think that this is a very impactful player. I like it more than Clowney, and I think he's someone that should be on the radar for the Lions because he makes sense to me for that short-term type of deal. And at the same time, it'd be, it'd be one of those things where if James came back, you keep Barnes, and you're like, we're going to roll with these guys. Then you can look at it and say, okay, these guys can also still be the future, but Shaq Barrett now can just aid us. And, and at best, like, hey, we never want to take Barnes on the field. Okay, let this guy just rush on third downs. Like, yeah, we may have overpaid a little bit for that, but can you ever have enough pass rushers? Not really. And he's a smart, smart player. So, to me, he just brings that to the table, brings the effort, and I think the Lions would be on board with that, and especially how much he played this past year. I, you, you know, it's good to see some of that durability from this past season in particular. So, to me, I like it. Um, would I sign him over a Van Ginkle? No. Actually, I would not. I would not do that. One, because I think Van Ginkle is more of a future piece. Two, I honestly think Van, King, Van Ginkle, with more time, could become a better pass rusher than what we see from Barrett. Could be wrong on that. I would, I would go a guy like Van Ginkle first, right, who we talked about before. But if we're going to look at that what a one-year thing, like that one-year options, and that's what we want, we don't want to necessarily replace someone, I think he makes a lot of sense. So I'm a Shaq Barrett fan, man. I think he's a good player. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you interested? Are you intrigued? Thank you, Pat, for watching, and I'm out.